Hi there, friends. Welcome to Harmony Hills Home and Garden. I'm Jenny, and we live and garden here in Baltimore, Maryland, Zone 7. Today, I'd like to give you an overview of my seed starting studio. I'm going to show you how I have set things up for this growing season in 2023. And I'll also talk through the equipment that I use, the pros and cons of various ways to set things up. So come with me and let's talk about getting set up for seed starting. So the very first thing that I want to tell you is that you do not have to invest in equipment for seed starting. You can use a paper cup and a windowsill that is a bright light on the south or east facing part of your house. You do not have to get involved in spending a lot of money on equipment if you are just getting started or even after you've been doing it for a long time. There is no requirement. You can totally be successful with the most basic of equipment. But if you are interested in learning how I've set up my lights and my what equipment I'm using, then this video is for you. I think the first thing to do is to give you a tour of the seed starting studio. Let me get you off of the tripod and take you on a tour. Hey, first of all, uh, I've got you currently set on regular magnification, but let me turn on the wide angle lens to make it look so much more grand than it really is. There you go. Doesn't it look spacious and huge? Yeah, no, really. It's about uh, four feet wide by oh, five or six feet deep. So let's let's go look in depth. And you can tell that it's pretty small because this table is four feet long and two feet deep. So and this shelf over here is four feet long. So this whole area, by the way, this shelf is three feet long. So actually we can do the math here. So the wall to the front of this is two feet. And then that's about a foot right there, three feet. So that's like, uh, let's say two, three feet plus three is six feet plus the width of this table is eight feet. So eight feet wide and four feet this way. That was a rambling mess. Let me see if I can try to be a little bit more coherent. Okay, so uh, I have two shelving systems. Both of these are shelves that we had in our home uh, just from over the years of owning homes. So uh, we purchased this one. This is two feet deep and four feet wide at probably Home Depot or Lowe's sometime in the past. This one has uh, steel shelving with adjustable shelving heights and it does have this uh, particle board or MDF um, shelf on it. I believe this is about a half an inch uh, thick this piece of wood here. So all the shelves are solid, um, no uh, wire shelving here. It has five shelves, one at the top I just use for storage. I also use the second one for storage. And then it has one, two, three shelves that are more in my height range where I have lights set up on them. And then this other shelving system, again, it's uh, just something that we had in the basement or in the garage from over the years of owning a home. This one is, I believe it's three feet wide, maybe three and a half feet wide. It's not fully four feet wide, I don't think. Uh, and then about a foot deep. And it too has five shelves on it. And I just use this one totally for storage. Again, these are shelving systems that we had in our home because we um, have owned homes and we needed storage. So uh, we just, pilfered from other areas of our storage areas in our basement and garage and, and use these shelves for this purpose. So if I were to buy a new shelf, I think I would still go for the ones with the solid shelving instead of the wire shelves, because uh, if I happen to spill water, which maybe I have, then the water doesn't go down onto uh, whatever is below, whether it's lights or other plants or other storage items. So I do like the solid wood on these shelves. I definitely would also go again for the four by two, two feet by four feet size of shelving if I were buying something new, because then you can put four of the 10, 20 trays on each of the shelves. And so it just maximizes your shelf space. But if you don't have room in your home or wherever you're doing this, then do what you have room for. Now, before I used these shelving systems, I used a folding table that I put on the floor of the basement, and then I just took the shop lights out of the ceiling, which were already there when we moved into the house, and I put them on chains, and I lowered them down to hang over top of the table. And that's how I did seeds in the spring of 2021, and it totally worked just fine. The downside of that method was that it took up a lot more space in the basement. 
And then before I use tables with shop lights hanging over them, I just put my seed starts on windowsills or in front of bright windows. We have some windows that face the south of our house and that was sufficient for several years. On each of these three lit shelves, I have hanging tube lights. These are tube um, LED shop lights. Now I have a few different styles of light fixtures here. This style has two bulbs in it and these reflector panels, and there's two of them side by side here. So for a total of four lights on this shelf. Down here, this is a different style. This is a single bulb light with these plastic reflector panels on it. There's two of those side by side. And then there's this very old um, shop light that we found in the basement ceiling here when we moved into the house. It has two bulbs on it. I don't currently have it lit. And these reflector lights. Now these are nice for making sure the light goes down, but also these make it hard to move trays in and out. So I'm not a fan of this. I'll probably use it this year, but I might replace that over time. And then down on the bottom here, I have another style. These are two, hard to see, two LED tube lights and two of each of them. And uh, they string end to end so I can plug them in separately. And in fact, over on the other end is where they are plugged in to each other. Now, before I set up these shop lights here and purchased the extra fixtures, I just went to the basement ceiling and see that? That's a shop light. This basement is filled with shop lights from a previous owner who was a woodworker and he had all these lights down here. So I just, I just pulled them down off of the ceiling and put them on this shelving system. And then I ended up buying a few more because they were sleeker, a little bit smaller. Uh, they didn't have that big uh, light reflector fin on either side so uh, but just to get started i just used what was here before that i purchased this one this is two feet long and it has a single tube light in it this is sold as a grow light i've got this at lowe's uh, and it was by fairy morse now this i have used on the kitchen counter to grow herbs in the kitchen and it worked really well for that purpose and of course, before I used any sort of artificial light, I used the good old sunlight of the window method, which does work. I have all the cords of my lights plugged into a power strip here. This has a surge protector in it. And then the power strip is connected to a timer. That's a mechanical timer. And it is set to go on at 6 a.m. and off at 10 p.m. So all the lights that are plugged into the timer go on for 16 hours a day. Okay, so let's talk about containers or what you're going to put your seeds into. Now, the most basic thing to do is get a paper cup. Do you remember Dixie cups in the bathroom? Did you grow up with a stack of Dixie cups, little two ounce cups in your bathroom? Maybe you still have them there. But if you can find paper cups with no wax coating, that's kind of important, then that is a perfectly fine way to start seeds. Um, you can also use toilet paper tubes. You can roll up your own seed uh, modules with newspaper. Um, you can use milk cartons. You can use all sorts of biodegradable paper products that are recyclable or that you have uh, taken from a different uh, part of your life and put into your seed starting. So that is the free or cheap way to do it. You can also use solo cups, plastic uh, cups, and those are reusable from year to year. You can also use things like um, styrofoam meat trays that you get from the grocery store or take out food containers that just make sure that if you're using any sort of improvised container like that, make sure you put holes in the bottom for drainage and then make sure that you put your containers on top of something like a tray or uh, a, some sort of surface that can capture water as it drains through those drainage holes. If you want to start to invest in purpose-built seed starting equipment for your trays and cells and things like that, then the very most common thing to do is to go to your garden center or even Lowe's or Home Depot and buy a 72 count tray. And they look kind of like this, except mine are used and kind of dirty. Um, so they have these holes 72 of them there's six rows of 12 holes and uh, what you do is you put your soil in there you put your seeds in there and they have holes on the bottom to soak up water and to drain water out 
and they're flexible, they're plastic, um, and these are what a lot of people sow their seeds into. You also can get these bottom trays which hold the seed cells and uh, capture any water that drains out. And then you can also get these uh, plastic clear lids called humidity domes. Now you can get those 72 count cell trays individually at the garden centers. I've seen them sold as pieces and you can just get the pieces that you need. Or you can often get them as a kit as well where it has a bottom tray, the 72 count tray, and then the humidity dome on top of that. And that's sold as one packaged product. Um, at my garden center that I go to in the north side of Baltimore, Valley View Farms, I, that's where I have seen that you can also buy 50 count trays. So uh, it's, it's a five by five. Actually, it's a five by 10, uh, two five by five trays go into that. Um, you can also get them in smaller cell counts. I think you can get 32 cell counts. So you can get different sizes for different needs. You can also purchase these sorts of things online at a lot of different retailers online. Now you can also find uh, seed starting kits that come in different sizes. So I've seen some that are like four inches by eight inches. I've seen some that are designed to fit on windowsills. So it's a long strip, um, all sorts of things. And if you do a quick Google search, I'm sure that you'll come up with so many options for seed starting equipment. Now, that's the next step up from paper cups or something like that. The plus side of that is that they're inexpensive. You can get them for a few dollars, or at least you could before we had supply chain problems. Um, and they are lightweight, they're easy to use, they are everywhere in the marketplace, you can find them very easily. There's a few downsides to them though. One is that they are made out of really flimsy plastic. And if you aren't super, super gentle with them, they fall apart, they break, they tear, and it's difficult to um, use them for more than one sewing. Now it can be done, in fact, I do, I have used my Sony two count trays for three or four years in a row, but that's by me being super, super careful, kind of guarding them with my life. Okay, that's an exaggeration, but you know, just being really careful about how I handle them, how I take care of them after I've used them, and still I've lost quite a few. Another downside is that when you have them in this format where you can break them apart into two 36 cell trays, but it's difficult to grow more than one type of seed in this because they may have different needs for light, different needs for water, different timings for when they're ready. And so if you're a small gardener like me, I don't need 72 of anything. I don't even need 36 of anything. And so for me, I usually sow about six cells of one seed. Maybe sometimes I sow 12 cells of one seed but I'm filling up the rest of the tray with something else. And so having them in that big format where you get 36 or 72 at a time, that's really not conducive to customizing the care regimen for your seedlings. So those are the two main reasons that I have actually further invested into my seed starting uh, equipment and I have upgraded to bootstrap farmer type of containers. And that's what's on this shelf here. So uh, Bootstrap Farmer sells online and they are really high quality, very rigid plastic. These are food grade, so you can grow your vegetables in them without any worries about that. Um, but you can see, maybe you can see just how sturdy they are. I'm, I'm really kind of squeezing them pretty hard and they won't bend. Let me do a side-by-side -side comparison. Put this guy in here and push down on it. Yeah. And so now my cells are all wonky. And so these, you can push down on them and they do not crush. So that's really solid. Um, I got the uh, six pack cell packs and I can fit 72 cells in this same size tray as over here. So it's roughly the same size of whole. Um, you can get them in black, you can get them in color. So I splurged and just got them in color. I figured that by buying colored high quality cells and trays, then the color would indicate to me, don't throw these away. These are not disposable. So now I know, and I'm going to teach my husband and anybody else who helps me in my garden, that if you're handling a colored pot, it does not go in the trash or recycle pile. Okay, so I purchased, uh, let's see, two, four, six, eight, ten trays that are colored. These are the bottom trays with no holes. And then I think I got one, two, three, four, five black trays. These do have drain holes in the bottom. Sometimes you want to put some um, plants into a bottom tray that does have holes in it so that like when 
like when I'm hardening off plants and I want to set them outside, I want to put them in a tray that has holes in the bottom. So I'll set them out. If it rains on them, that's great. The rain won't pool in the tray and soak my seedlings. It'll soak through, go out those holes, and it'll be just fine. So I did want to get some that do have holes in them. I also purchased some of these. I forget, are these two inch or three inch? I don't remember but uh i got 80 i guess i got 80 of this size and they have i also got this tray to hold them in so you can put these cups into this tray and then finally i got some of these these are i believe five inches and um i also bought the tray that holds those the last thing that I got in that order was a bunch of these domes. These are humidity domes that are taller. Uh, so you can see that they will give more room for the plants to grow. They also have vents on the top that you can open and close. And they have this nice little handle, which is useful for moving it around. I decided to go ahead and invest in this infrastructure for my seed starting because I have really enjoyed um, learning more and more about seed starting over these last few growing seasons. And I figure, you know what, I don't see myself stopping anytime soon. So I decided to just invest in the high quality stuff and hopefully not have to purchase any of the lower quality flimsy plastic things in the future. Soil, what am I using for my seed starting medium? Well, I have a few options. In this big tub, I have a brick of coconut coir. This is compressed coconut husks that have been all ground up. You can see they're a fine powder right now. But when you put warm water on this, it expands and releases and becomes a great medium for soil. Uh, I've mixed it with perlite. That's what these little white dots are. So this is just coconut coir and perlite mixed together. And um, it holds moisture really, really well. It's very lightweight. And uh, it's what I'm using as my soil starting medium this season. But down here on my shelf system at the bottom, I do have a few other things here. This is seed starting mix that I purchased last year, 2022. And uh, I still have some left over, so I'll probably use that up. I think this, is this Espoma? Yeah, Espoma. I have in the past used Jiffy as well. I also have some vermiculite down there, some cactus potting soil. And then I have this truck here, which is just where I collect any waste that I want to take out to the compost bin before I actually get it out there. I forgot to mention a couple of different specialized containers that I have for seed starting. Well, first of all, I have these peat pots, which I purchased two or three years ago. I used one of the four and I didn't like it, so I haven't used up the other ones. Maybe I'll use them on something. But this is this is what I wanted to show you guys. This is my uh, deep root trainers. Uh, they come in this package of, I believe there are eight of them. And uh, yeah, there we go. So you fold them in half and close them up like that. And then um, you fill that with soil and put your seed in there. And then the roots grow downward in these channels that are on the, the edges of the container and makes nice long roots for things like sweet peas or I don't know, sweet peas. And then it also comes with this tray to hold all eight of them after you've put them together and a humidity dome for them. Last year I used those to grow sweet peas. I suppose you could also grow other things in them, but I haven't done that. And then the other piece of equipment that I have are these Grow Ease self-watering seed trays from Gardener Supply. Okay, so they come with a bottom tray. Then they have this rack or shelf or whatever you put in there. And then the top tray. So they have um, 24 holes. They have nice big holes in the bottom. And then what you do is you fill this with soil, put your seeds in there, and then you get some wicking material. And I, I don't, I don't see any of my wicking mats, but there are black wicking mats that draw water up from the bottom reservoir and then spread it across that shelf plate underneath the seed tray. So imagine there's water down in there and then there's a, a black mat that goes across here and, and down the side and it wicks up that water, spreads the water across the whole mat. And then you put this on top of that mat 
and the soil that's in this cell touches through that hole down there, touches that black mat, and then wicks the water up into the cell. And so it bottom waters through capillary action, and you don't have to top water. So they're self-watering. And they also come with these dome lids. Now, the trays are smaller. They are not the same size as the 10 by 20 trays that the 72 count things fit in. And so they're nice to use for little um, small batch things. Like I have these onions growing here and needed a place to put them to catch water. So works well for that. I'm using this as my bottom watering uh, system. So I just take this out and I put that there for a few minutes until it draws up the water. And then I can shake it off and put it back over there. So I like the smaller size of these Grow Ease things, other than the fact that you don't have to do 72 of something, you can do only 24, and that's really nice to have that flexibility. But also, I like using them for other purposes like that. So um, this is how I'm storing my seeds right now. I got these little trays from the Dollar Tree last week, and they're perfect size to hold seed packets. And I just used cardboard to make a little filing tabs and I've got them alphabetically all in here. If any of those seeds need cold stratification in order to germinate, then they would want to be stored in the refrigerator. But I have already stored all of these seeds in the refrigerator for about a month already, so I really think holding them here on this shelf is gonna be just fine. If you're worried about whether or not your seeds need a cold stratification period or not, and you're not sure, you could look it up and figure it out on a seed by seed basis, or you could just store all your seeds in the refrigerator take care of them all. I don't think anything will be hurt by that and some of them will really love it. Uh, so I'm using these dollar store containers for that purpose. I also am using some more just to hold gloves and I broke down and bought some more gladiolus at the Dollar Tree the other day. I need to put those into the ground in a little, well, probably a month or two to get those into the ground. Um, I also got these at the Dollar Tree and I just, you know, store some just basic tools, equipment, my fertilizers, my tags, and, you know, just to kind of corral all the stuff. Okay, and then for a seat here, I use this uh, gardening bench. This is a kneeler. You can turn it around and kneel on it to reach the ground or you can sit on it like a bench. I got that from Gardener's Supply. I love it. Oh my gosh, I love it. It's perfect for a bench in here. But also, I take it outside and I use it as a bench and or as a kneeler for working in the garden. And it is just a really wonderful thing. When you turn it upside down, then the feet, which are feet right now, but then they become handles. And so for, you know, someone like me, I won't say how old I am. Okay, I'm turning 55 this year. My knees are not what they used to be. And so getting up and down off the ground, uh, I appreciate that there's a handle there that I can push off of and help me get up because um, my knees are telling me that I'm 55 this summer. Okay, and I think the last couple of things I wanted to share with you, this um, table is just, you know, it's four by two. It's got um, expandable legs. I can make it shorter than this. I can, whatever, close it down when I'm not using it. And then I have this tidy tray, this green um, tray. I bought this off of Amazon four years ago, three years ago, something like that. I'll see if I can find a link for it and put it in the link below. And then I guess I will just admit to you that I have just piles and piles of stuff. I've got dirt on the floor. I've got watering cans, trash. I've got old containers that I need to take care of. And there's heat mats. Oh, I didn't mention the heat mats. So I have one heat mat that I just bought this year and it's four feet long and two feet wide. And so uh, it will hold four 10 by 20 trays um, is not currently plugged in, so it's not hot right now. And then I have a smaller one down there that is the size of a one 10 by 20 tray, and that's actually um, heating up right now for my seedlings that are in there. And then I do have a, a third one that's 20 by 20, so about half of a shelf can be covered. So I have capacity for four, five, six, seven trays to be heated if I need to. Heat mats are another thing that you don't have to invest in. If you need to heat your seedlings, you can put them on top of a radiator. You can put them on the top of your refrigerator. You can keep them in a warm room. Um, you don't have to invest in these heat mats. So this is another upgrade that I've given myself just to make things more easy and flexible and to give me, give me some opportunity to uh, do things kind of the easy way. So I, I don't like having to run all over the house to figure out where my seedlings are. So the radiator method won't work for me. I do have one more thing that I want to show you, and that is this big trash bag. And it contains all of my milk jugs and containers from last year's winter sewing project. I did do winter sewing last year. I don't know if I'm going to do it this year. I might. I, 
I probably will end up doing it this year. I need to get on it if I'm going to, though, because we're already in February. Um, but uh, so I just saved all my containers last year. I rinsed them out with the hose. I dunked them in some bleach water. I let them air dry. I didn't scrub them, so there are still dirt particles on them, but I did dunk them all in bleach, so there shouldn't be any sort of disease on them. And so then I just stored them in that black plastic trash bag, and um, now they can be reused this year. I haven't talked about fertilizer yet. I do have some fertilizer. Last year I used, what did I use? Let's look. Last year I used this jug of fish emulsion or Super Thrive plant food for all plants. It was a 411 fish fertilizer. Um, it's heavy on nitrogen with the four parts nitrogen to one part phosphate and one part um, potassium. This year I've invested in a jar of Neptune's Harvest I don't have it with me down here. I would show you. Um, it has a more of a balanced nutrition elements to it. It's not so heavy on the nitrogen. So I'm hoping that that will help me with stronger um, plants. Last year, my plants were fine, but uh, because it had so much nitrogen, um, they got kind of green and bushy and didn't flower as early as they might have if I had given them a more balanced fertilizers. Well, friends, I think that that is it. That's what I have to show you. That's my seed starting studio setup. If you have any questions about what I've shown you, put them down in the comment section down below. I'll be happy to answer them if I can. Also, I will put the links to everything that I can find links for into the description box down below this video. If you want to buy any of the things that I have here, I will do my very best to find links for you. Some of the links will be affiliate links, meaning that I will get a tiny, tiny commission if you purchase, uh, but it's no cost to you if that's the case. And also, I don't have affiliate links for everything that I'm going to link, so not everyone will have that situation. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed what you saw. If you did, will you hit that like button, please? Also, if you wouldn't mind, share the video with other folks that you know who are just getting started with their seed projects. Uh, and um, if you haven't yet, I'd love to have you subscribe to the channel as well. I am really grateful that you were here. Thank you for watching. I will see you again in another video real soon. Take care. Bye.